then, ladies and gents, we're going to bring you bout number 19 of this evening's card. First of all, in the blue corner, representing Olympians, please welcome Grant Ogiogborn. And the walkout songs keep coming. We'll stay. Someone had to. I think we might stay quiet for this one and let the crowd here at Rise and Conquer sing along. Didn't need lifting up. Well, then, all, ladies and gents, can you please welcome his opponent into the red corner? Representing TFT MMA, please welcome Jamie Roper. A huge pop as well for Jamie Roper. What a fight we're in for here. For me, two of the best amateur lightweights in the country. Square enough. In your pre uh, future prelim bout here, the Rising Conquer 10. Yeah, I've, I've actually trained with both men. Both men are fantastic fighters. I've trained with Grant down at Team Renegade and obviously Jamie Roper uh, Fishers. Both very skilled fighters. I'm really looking forward to this. I don't care how unprofessional this is. It looks like Dustin Poirier versus Doug Rose. <laughs> Here we go, what a fight we have. I mean, what corners as well. Andrew Fisher, Nana Armani, two of the best exports of the UK in MMA in recent years. Very much looking forward to this one. Rupert is ready. He usually has quite an exciting entrance into the cage. Let's see if he still has it now. 
And there it is. The somersault in. A little forward rolling about. Hi, ladies and gents, once again, this is band number 19 of this evening. It's a UAR lightweight bout. First of all, introducing new fighters in the blue corner. Age 27, he stands at 5 foot 11 inches tall. He's got a mixed martial art record of eight wins, four losses, and one draw. He hails from Bristol, representing Olympians MMA. He weighed in at 70.6 kilograms. Please welcome Grant Ogiogborn. <laughs> Facing him across the cages, his opponent in the red corner, age 20, standing 181 centimetres tall. He's got a record of eight wins, four losses, no draws. Hails out of Sunderland, representing TFT MMA. He weighed in at 70.7 kilograms. Please welcome Jamie Roper. We scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Your referee, Paul Crosley. The action's about to begin. And here we go. Fast. Huge right hand to open proceedings. One, two. Augie, Ogborn, opening proceedings away. Beautiful left, left hand as well. well. Dude, this is a fast start. We knew this was going to be a quick start. We knew this was going to be a big fight. And it's certainly living up to that just seconds into this round. Very sharp hands from Osborne. Nice low kick on the return, but... To Roper's credit, he's not panicking. Looking to swing some back, the power of his own. Constant oh, beautiful little side step right in the right hand. What a fast, fast start this one. Yeah, I'm not sure if he needed to go for this takedown. Obviously, like if he gets top position or gets to the back, that's great, but. He was doing good work on the feet. Jimmy, two big shots early doors there. We don't know how early he is. We don't know how clear his head is now still. Yeah. Osborne could be giving Roper an opportunity to recover, but you just can't tell. Nice knee, nice knee. But Roper seems to be staying calm, just doing the right defences, not, not overly exerting himself. Nice knee up the middle there. Osborne's calling, calling for that dirty boxing. And he gets the takedown. And coming through with that leg lace, triangling the legs. His head is low, though. Jamie's head is higher than his at the minute, which means Jamie might have an advantage in the scrambles. That's exactly what his coach, Nadan Araman, is asking for here. Getting his, for Ogbon to get his head above Robas. Nadine Marani getting very animated in the corner. Minute left. Naramani want the finish from his man. Roper doing well to negate some of this damage here. Yeah, Roper, because Roper's got such long arms. Look how he can just stretch his arm out, his left arm out straight and get that wrist control. Osborne has managed to free it and is now landing some shots again. Roper has managed to get it back to a half guard with an underhook. His underhook's very shallow at the minute. It's not got a lot of power on it, but still, it's better than nothing. And now he's managing to re-establish a full guard. Beautiful work. Osborne just doesn't seem to care. Just keeps throwing his shots. Osborne's just working very systematically here. Apologies. I've, I know him and I've been calling him Osborne. <laughs> More big strikes. Time in what was a very, very, very good round. Osborne was slower to get up there. You can't tell how much energy he's used there. He's taking some deep breaths, whereas Jamie looks a bit more chill. Tough, tough start when you come out. Yes, you warm up through the back, but you're still cold to all intents and purposes. Hit with a big right hand like that, and we see what happens. Fantastic, 
Roba receiving some treatment here from the cut lady over the eyes. Seconds out. Last words from Ogborn's corner there, straight on him. We want more of the same. And here we go. Put your gloves in, it's that right hand again. Straight on him. Roper firing back. Ogborn with beautiful left high kick. Still got a good bounce in his step, considering how hard he went in that first round. Ooh, Not for a spinning back. Fist, but then lands a high kick on the exit. Straight to that ball. Beautiful! Beautiful by Jamie Roper. Beautiful throw. Just took the momentum and just went with it. Now he's in top position. The only trouble with that throw is Ogborn does have an underhook. Because you're throwing him with the wizard, you're putting him onto an underhook. Now he's established his half guard. Ogborn is working his way up and working his way to the back. But Jamie's doing a good job of pressing Ogborn in the fence here. We said this was going to be a high level fight and we were bang on Harry. Jamie looking to take the back. Oh. Oh, slips off the back. A bit of a risky move. Uh, I did catch Andrew Fisher's head going into his hands that moment. Roper was in a very good position and as much as that would have been amazing if he pulled off a climbing off the cage armbar, he has lost the position as a result of it. And a round down already, it's not what you want. Yeah. Young 20-year-old Roper, he able to get himself back in the main column after an equally entertaining fight with Ryan Campbell and Ryzen Conquer 9. Completed out in the IMAFs as well, 2021 World Championships. A route so many amateurs seem to be going now. Ogborn doing a good job of framing with that left hand. He's reaching through for a cradle. I believe he's connected his hands and he's using that to pass. He's got more into like a front headlock position with this cradle. He's attacking the he neck. To watch for a standing guillotine here. Roper doing a good job. Two on ones, I believe he's got there trying to defend it. He's got good control of the wrists. Going through that double. Ogborn uses the 100% and manages to catch the arm in a funny position. But Jamie, that amazing dexterity, manages to get his arm out of that position. Was that a knee to the head from Roper? Ogborn was certainly asking the referee questions. It wasn't enough for the referee to stop the action. Of course, knees to the head not allowed here in amateur rules. And the unified rule set of the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. Jamie's very bent. Yeah, like, <laughs> on a lot of people, that would have been a reversal. I mean, it, it has ended up being a reversal, but it took a lot of doing. And Ogborn going back to his ground and pound. He's very heavy-handed. Seconds left here, and... And it. Another vastly competitive round with Ogborn, though, probably taking it. Yeah, that... A beautiful, beautiful hip throw from Jamie, and he had a, he had good position, but it's just I feel like when he watches this back, he'll realise that the climbing up the wall armbar thing probably wasn't the best decision. But it's Jamie Roper. What do you expect? It's a fight at the end of the day. It's one of these things that you know you're two rounds down if you can pull that off and get submission of the night and you won the fight. That's what the amateurs are there for. The amateurs are there to make your mistakes like that. Go yeah, ahead, definitely. Here we go, the third and final round of this lightweight contest. And oh, what a fight it's been so far. Touch your gloves and we're straight in the action. Up on straight away. Takes that head kick. It's hard to tell how hurt he is. I don't know if it just caught him off balance. Oh, what a James beautiful left hand. Caught there as well. What a fight this has been. This has lived up to all expectations. Both of them throwing high kicks. Another good right hand from Ogborn, and he shoots straight in. This is the smarter route to victory. Jamie trying to attack the Kamura, but on that single leg, he gets the takedown. 
James stuffing the head, keeping high head position. But this, I feel like because of the success Ogborn has had when he's been on top, this is just the route he's going to take. Because even though he's been having a lot of success on the feet, he just it's less risky being here than being out in the open with Jamie throwing as well, you know. Because Jamie's throwing back as, as good as he's getting, like he's throwing some wild, they're both throwing wild stuff at each other, but um, yeah, I feel like Ogborn definitely is, is trying to take the safe route to victory now. It's exactly that though, isn't it? When both men are swinging the way they are, all it takes is one shot line on the chin of either man and it's lights out. Yeah, you just, you have a little lapse in concentration and, Staying on top in the guard. Very good game plan for Ogborn. There's no need two rounds to the good. Just it just needs to be a little bit more active. The refs have been very quick to stand people up to, tonight. Um, so he needs to be looking to land his shots. Roper going for that arm, but Ogborn was wise to it. It's, it's been a tough night at the office for Jamie Roper, but that tenacious attitude he's got, it's non-stop. He's still working, he's still looking for his way out. And he, he's almost, he is almost free. I feel like Ogborn will, will re-attack with wrestling if there's a separation. There we go, Ogborn looking for that single leg. Jamie, Jamie going for the Kimura. His teammate Paul Hartburn put Kimura a really good use in this fight earlier and Jamie has done the same. Jamie needs to start working quickly now. He needs a finish. Yeah, it, he definitely does that. Does need a finish. There's a, a rough first two rounds. But he's working. Credit to him. What a fight this has been, though. Unbelievable, these two men. Jamie needs to just go for something. Go for broke here. And he is as well. Beautiful over. Strikes to finish. What a fight from both men what an unbelievable scrap I feel like this will definitely go the way of Ogborn but man what a fight I would love to know what's being said there between coach and fighter Andrew Fisher and Jamie Roba. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Go on. Hi, right, ladies and gents, could you put your hands together for both of our warriors inside the kids, please? Another fantastic technical bout we've just seen. We can only have one winner. After three three-minute rounds, we've got the judges' scorecard for a unanimous decision in favour of the blue corner, Grant Oggy Ogborn. And also, Oggy ladies and gents, put your hands together it. for your runner-up, Jamie Roper. That was a tremendous fight. Roper will no doubt be back. And Ogborn looks to extend his win streak. Up next, we have our professional main card. Opening up with debutants, Nathan Hayward taking on Thomas Zadanowski. Don't go around without you, it's hard to... 